joining me for Crate Taps. This is take two. We're having problems with our Wi-Fi, but we, we got it covered. Uh, this is Alex Parker. And Alex Parker is usually behind this uh, film doing things. That's what he does for a living. He creates films. And he's joining me today. I have the honor and privilege of welcoming here to Crate Talks. And Alex and I go way back. <laughs> into the school of ministry and just doing things for the school and for other events that have happened but tell us a little bit about your background like how did you get a heart for film and what were you doing beforehand and what led you to get involved in film i moved here about seven years ago to go to bssm seven years that's <laughs> good i came from nashville tennessee i had a career in the music business doing what they call a and r which is finding bands putting them in the studio getting artwork done doing all the behind the scenes stuff. Yeah. Um, and I thought that period in my life was over and done with. Uh, and Speaking. Yeah, you know, getting on. all that stuff out. And he told me specifically that everything that I had experienced in the East Coast for in the music business was to get me ready for the movie business in the West Coast. Yeah, that, that's an important point to make, like God is preparing. And so sometimes we, we forget about those little steps of like what we're doing now and how it leads to what happens later. Totally. And so if you're just starting out or if you have a heart for certain things like film or, I mean, there's so many things that film touches, fashion, oh my goodness, like drama, <laughs> dance, <laughs> uh, all different kinds of ways that this creative player can move into the whole film industry, which is what you love. Mm -hmm. So so don't despise the day of small beginnings. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, so it, it was a lot of working through disappointment from the past, things that never materialized, being just totally burned out. Um, yeah. So it, literally, I believed God when he said he's going to be ready for the movie business, but I don't know what that looks like. I knew very little about it. Yeah. And so after first year and second year, starting to take the film classes, Yes. in third year and the year after. Um, I remember in the first film class that during, you have down times and cycles in the entertainment business. And so there were many years that I worked for Blockbuster Video on the side as extra income. And I'd forgotten, I've seen tons of movies. <laughs> I have seen so many movies. And uh, so we would be in class talking about certain things, aspects right. of filmmaking. I would remember, I saw that. I need to go find that again. and. Um, by this time, Blockbuster was no more, so I was having to build my own library or borrow things or wow. go to, you know, Netflix. But uh, it just, it reminded me of a lot of things that I had seen and that I needed to re-investigate and yeah. check into more and in that finding strengths, what I was good at, what I was not good at. So And finding your rhythm of what, what you want to do in your life and using the things that were your experiences even in a job into what you really want to do in film. Totally. So sometimes we forget that those things dovetail. <laughs> God doesn't waste <laughs> a thing. That is for sure. Totally. Yeah. That's awesome. So this is incredible. So now you've been creating films. Mm -hmm. And I know that you did one for the I3. We had a production here that was uh, in, in a big event area called our Civic, which is a large venue. And so he put together the film for that. And which was amazing, it was a musical. <laughs> but there's lots of hiccups that you found too. There's things where you go, oh, this is all set, and then you're presenting and then something happens. And there's things that you have to look at from every angle and from so many different um, objectives because you have a director that has a heart for it and you have mm -hmm. others. So, so how do you work that out? How do you, how do you balance um, bringing in the presence of God? Mm -hmm into your film <laughs> yeah. and, and into also there's so many people that, that have different opinions. How, how do you work that out? Definitely need the Holy Spirit on <laughs> set. That's 100% that's sure. Um, filmmaking is a collaborative effort. Yeah. It's not just one person. A lot of people think the director is in charge and they do everything. They are more the point person. They are the person who has the vision. Uh, but it's really the producers that kind of do all the behind the scenes work to let the directors direct. Um, so that's where I came in for that project more yeah. than anything else. We already had um, creative director Armina who was directing the show and then yeah. knew she wanted this film to kind of set backstory and establish characters. Right. So she wrote the script for that and I 
was the producer for it. So I found the director, I found the cameraman, we found and booked and locked locations. Yeah. Um, she pretty much took care of all the actors because they're actors in the show. Right. Um, and then I also did the editing. So I was in charge of making sure the post-production, after everything was shot, comes together at the right time, that the sound guy gets everything mixed and, and we're color corrected and everything is a go and in the format it needs to be in for the performance. And then even during the performance, I know when there was tech rehearsal, there were some issues that right, had to be work worked through. out. Yeah. So, so I know like this is like a huge project, film is huge. <laughs> Where does your inspiration come from to see the race to the finish? Where, where do you gather that that strength to go? Oh, dang! Another color correction here. <laughs> or, oh, that didn't work out well. Where does your inspiration come from? Well, it depends on the project, and it, it depends on what I'm involved in. I've written, directed, and I've produced everything I've been involved in, and I've also edited everything I've been involved in. Um, That's amazing. The first two projects I did were I actually did the writing, directing, and producing. I pretty much oversaw everything. And wow. it is, I mean, you really have to have a passion for something like that. Yeah. Um, otherwise, it's so easy to drop the ball. It's so easy to keep people motivated and keep yeah. people on a schedule. Yeah. Um, and honestly, I think when you say yes in your heart to something like that, God is there to back you up. Totally. And, crazy ways you do not expect. And I love how you you see the you see the thread of God weaving through what you create and you think, oh my gosh, how did I get this to happen? And sometimes it's a walk of faith when you step out in a creative outlet. Yeah. And uh, and I know like a lot of a lot of you out there are creative in some form. And again this is Alex Parker joining <laughs> me, yay, about <laughs> film and what he's done in film. But in everything that we do, whether it's music and art or dance or film or photography or writing, story is huge. Yeah. And without a story, you can't create a great film. You can't create a great writing piece or other things. So, uh, tell me your journey and story. How do you? How does story weave into mm -hmm. film? It's very important. <laughs> I mean, because you could have a great idea, and yeah. I've seen it many times. I'm sure people watching have seen it. You'll see someone with a great idea or a great visual or they get a great location, but once you shoot that, it's like, Who would watch I have it? to be interested. <laughs> yeah, totally. you, have to, you have to give me a, a, a reason to invest myself in the yeah. two hours or the 20 minutes or whatever it is that you're, however long it's, 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 uh, your piece is. So awesome. for me, uh, to find an objective, there are a lot of ways you can go about it. There are so many workshops you can go to and exercises you can do. But yeah. for me, I have to have something in the heart. Something has to tug in the heart. And you have to have a reason to need to see what happens next or to want the main character to triumph or exactly. to get something done or accomplish something. You yeah, know? it's true. Um, I think that all of us, I know myself, I'm, I'm a big film buff, but it's like, there, what makes a film great? What makes a film? I mean, sometimes you yeah. see some Christian movies and you go, oh my gosh, they made it too obvious. Or there wasn't enough intrigue. Or there wasn't enough, really, reality in the character. They thought for it. They, the, mm -hmm. they, they left out the audience thinking for themselves. And, and yet, sometimes you see some great movies that aren't Christian by the producer or the director. But you go, oh my gosh, I just felt God. Mm. I felt like I was inspired and so there's something about like finding out what makes the movie great to you what and I know a lot of you are out there your film buffs like why do you watch certain movies what what is the intrigue behind it and what makes a, a movie stand out like like I mean every Christmas what do you watch <laughs> I mean it's yeah. like you have your favorites that have been happening throughout gosh the, the years of, of what's been going on in the film industry so if people are wanting to create great art that that stands the test of time, a great film, great, how, how would you make it great? What is your inspiration? <laughs> great, uh, yeah, I saw that question and I was like, wow, that's kind of broad. I mean, it depends on who you talk to, it depends on your perspective, it depends on what your criteria and what you like. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you wanted to talk in the business, it would definitely be box office. What's, 
you know, what has earned the most money, which if that's the case, this year one of the great movies would be Captain America Civil War. Like, it yeah. earned $1 billion and it hasn't even hit home video yet. But then you have Juno, who, she was not yeah. even a famous writer, and she put that together, and that just, like, stole the heart of the American audience. So there's that there's that part where sometimes you, you, you have to really follow what God has said to you or what's in, inside that. Does that make sense? Oh, yeah. So you need kind of both, don't you? You need to figure you out do. the trends, but then you need to figure out, okay, what, what's unique about mine? Um, I was thinking about this last night, uh, about the great movies, the, the ones people have talked about, yeah. uh, the ones that, that I'm excited about. Yeah. Um, I remember we were talking about two years ago with the associates who were sitting around and uh, one of them said, I love Birdman. That is the best movie I've ever seen. I'm probably never going to watch it again. But, yeah. but but what was great about that is technical. It was it, it was seamless. It was shot so amazing. It was really a spectacle, um, something amazing to see. But for me, this year, uh, I saw The Big Short. I thought that was yeah. great. Um, and it did win an Academy Award because of the way they communicated the the information, right. like large concept information, so that I can understand it, so my mom can understand it. You know, my right. my, uh, you know, totally teenage nephew could understand it. Yeah. Um, but uh, there's one other one I want to mention, Eddie the Eagle. That was a great movie. That, I just saw that because That's I mean, it's great. just I mean, it, it is in, it's inspirational. I'm excited to see what happens next. I want the guy to win <laughs> totally. after so many, like falling on his face so many times, you know. So yeah. it, it really, for, I will say for me, creating something, what I create, what I think is funny or what I think is entertaining versus kind of yeah. mirroring what you were talking about. Uh, the people will think this is funny, so we're going to write this joke because people will think it's funny, mm -hmm. but it doesn't make you laugh. So why would you think why it's going to make somebody <laughs> else laugh, you know? So... Oh. Well, I think, just for everyone out there, it's like, it's so important to be authentic in everything you create, not to do it for someone else, but to do it because God's speaking to you. Like, the art that I just did, I just did this last night, and you'll probably see it on leggings and impartarts.com, <laughs> which you can check out, or in a iPhone cover, but there's something that happens when you paint or you create or you film authentically it's like what you talked about not not to earn money not to do this but just out of mm -hmm. the sheer passion of creating yeah and i think there's something that happens when we do it for other ulterior motives because god knows our heart so i think that's huge mm -hmm. um and i think it's part of us also learning to be wise as serpents but gentle as doves that learn but not compromise True. We are, which is so so <laughs> So you know, another thing I know a lot of you might be thinking about as far as films go and stuff like that is, ooh, how can we impact? How can we influence Hollywood? Or how can we transform the the entertainment industry? And I think that a lot of people out there that have been raised Christian have kind of felt like that's not where God wants us to go, or that's not important to God. Mm -hmm. And yet, it is what our children are watching 24-7. Yeah. I mean, you look at what's grossing, and, and you look and go, oh, why wouldn't he want us to touch it? But share with us your heart on what you feel about that. that. Yeah, that's... Uh, uh, I've talked to many people, <laughs> professionals, uh, yeah. producers, directors, teachers, students, about that very thing. Um, to have a heart for people as people because I think a lot of these people especially in the entertainment business yeah. people come to them wanting something they exactly. come to them because they um, know them for a song or they know them for uh, a film and it just it, it reduces them to a product or a commodity and not yeah. as a person so number one being vested in someone as a person yeah. Um, and I do have a huge heart for that. You know, yeah. I, in some instances, I love what you're doing, but how are you? How's your family? Exactly. How are your kids? You know, how's, you know, what's going on in your life? You know, and so that's one big, yeah. big thing for and me. And I know that Tanasha, if you did not listen to it last week, Tanasha shared her journey about what happened when she went back to Oklahoma 
and she produced Dream Girls with this this team and what well, God did and all the miracles that happened. But there's something about being authentic, but seeing what people need, and and Hollywood needs to to have prayer. It needs to be touched. It it the people need to be known and. I mean, all of you out there, you can lift up a prayer for someone. You can mm -hmm. see God begin to transform and see things shift and change. You can create even great music or art or, or different fashion that could possibly even transform that culture. And so sometimes what we forget is that we have the Creator God inside of us. Yeah. <laughs> and He's created us to make things that are beautiful and great and to be authentic in that. It's, it's really, it's our, it's our greatest desire in doing great talks is to see us say, well, why not you? I mean, why not your <laughs> film changing history or your idea or your writing or or your um, concepts for what you want to see happen? And I think that sometimes we limit what we are based upon the experiences that we've had in our past instead of saying, well, no, God, show me how I can be faithful in little things mm -hmm. and then grow into that and so, share with the audience, how important is it to take little steps towards your destiny as a creative oh, and as a film artist? definitely. I mean, to have a great idea. I think God can give you a great idea like that. I really believe that. I've gotten several of them. Yeah. But that's, that's a seed. <laughs> He's giving you a seed. Mm -hmm. And you have to nurture it. You have to water it. You have to grow it. Um, I had an idea for a script. So for me, it's, okay, well, I have to actually start writing it. <laughs> um, I have to reach out to people for help, uh, for critique. I have to do research. Yeah. Um, I mean, so those are the little things you can do. But being faithful to what God Super gives you important. sets you up for him to give you so much more. Yeah, um, yeah, totally. And uh, I, feel like, I feel like we need to, like, transform something right now. I just... I feel like let's take people on a journey to see what would happen if we began to see and call in the great films before they're even here. Like, let's mm -hmm. just go on an imaginary journey <laughs> into the into the heavenly realms and mm -hmm. let's see, like, God, what what kind of films do you want to create that are going to change marriages, that are going to change kids that are anorexic mm -hmm. or are involved in drugs or or families where there's been a split up. I mean, what kind of movies, if we dream it, if we ask the Holy Spirit to open up ideas, then we're part of the solution. True. And so I just really, um, I want to encourage people out there to ask God, 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 what films do we want to see? And begin to call it in before it's time. Even intercede for people who already write films. Exactly. Yeah. That's huge for creative ideas mm -hmm. to come to them. And when you look at like some great producers and great film writers, they get these epiphanies, they get these ideas. Well, why not if God wants us to be to to ask for angels to come and to share with them, yeah. that can happen. <laughs> yeah. Right? Totally. I mean Darren Wilson is a perfect example. He wrote Finger of God and produced it. Uh, but Ryan, I want you to uh, speak to the audience for those that don't you know, they've had these ideas, but they haven't believed mm -hmm. that they're part of what could happen in, in really seeing their creativity transform culture. Mm -hmm. And I just want you just to speak to them and uh, tell them your journey and tell them <laughs> about what, what you, I, what your heart I is. I do have a good testimony <laughs> that goes awesome. right around um, with what you're talking about. How can we start to infiltrate yeah. and what can we do and what does it look like? Um, I've been... Kind of coaching a, a a friend of mine who's a teacher in a magnet school for drama, and one of the big things that is talked about with actors specifically in drama and film is they'll get into character, wow. they'll get deep into character, and it's hard for them to shake the character once they're done. I mean, we've seen oh, yeah. examples like I, I think Heath Ledger is a great That's example. A great example. Yeah. He got into that character and studied insanity and never really got got, got out of it. Um, and so as a, us as believers, what can we do to, yeah. to bring uh, emotional moments to the screen or to the stage and then release it and bring the Holy Spirit through it more than totally, anything else. Yeah. So I was uh, workshopping with this person. We came up with some ideas. When I visited her two years ago, she asked me to anoint the, 
the door posts and, and walk around and pray in the studio. So I did that. She said she immediately saw a marked difference in all of her students. These are wow. junior high and high school, <laughs> magnet school, gifted and talented drama students. There you go. So upping it this year, um, she really wants to bring the Holy Spirit into the environment, but you, it's a school, so you can't really, you know, mm -hmm. say that. When I said, well, why don't you, you know, do your exercises, but say, we're going to invite the Spirit of Truth to come into the room right now, come which on, is the Holy go. Spirit. Yeah. And so they invite the Spirit of Truth into the room. Wow. And uh, they've had some amazing breakthroughs in many areas, but one of them that I found to be amazing is... Um, they will actually do a compliment circle. And this is the idea of the students. They'll actually yeah. sit down unprompted and start saying, what I really like about you is this. And what I thought your performance there, this was amazing what you did. And what they don't realize is they're actually prophesying to one another. They've wow. invited the spirit of truth into the room. They're giving them words of knowledge, words of wisdom. And uh, I mean, to me, that's amazing. This is happening that's in a school. Powerful. Yeah, that's amazing. That's powerful. That's just like, God wants to give people creative ideas. Now, I would love for you to impart to them, like pray and just ask God to come upon them. Mm -hmm. um, because part of the process that is that, like sometimes we don't realize that we are in a battle for our mm -hmm. identity and we're in yeah. a battle. And the more that we take courage and step out in our creative outlets, the more that God's going to bring about shifts and changes. And so, I would love for you just to impart mm -hmm. to them and to declare that over them and, and pray. So okay. if that's you out there, we want you to think <laughs> about your dream. I don't know what it is, whether mm -hmm. it's in art, film, dance, writing, fashion, transformation in culture, transformation in the church. We don't care, but just put your hands up, hold that dream close. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to have Alex just pray and prophesy into that. Wow. Yeah. So right now, Holy Spirit, um, what is it that you want to give this person? And I feel like those of you in reception mode right now have a picture in your head. There's a gift that the Holy Spirit's putting in your hands. Come right on. now, there's even some ideas right now that the Holy yeah, Spirit is laying on. out for uh, pictures, for fashion ideas, for, um, yeah. for scripts, um, publications. There's even something about the Holy Spirit's giving you an idea for a publication or a magazine article. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, everything that you've done for me, I ask that you would do tenfold for those <laughs> watching. Um, yeah. And uh, a gift of wisdom to steward the seeds that are being yes. poured out right now in the name of Jesus. Yeah. We, yeah. Just, we just say that that little seed is going to turn into a great big mm -hmm. tree. We break off any discouragement or anything like, well, I've never done that before. We break that off and we just put... Just take one step in front of the other and just walk and begin to fulfill that dream. Whether that's today picking up a pen and writing, whether that's going to a computer and starting a script, whatever it is that that dream is going to flourish. Mm -hmm. So that's good. That's awesome. <laughs> well, thank you, Alex, for yeah. joining me. This has been such an incredible time. And and again, remember that this is your, your season for developing your creativity and going to the next level. We'll see you next week <laughs> on Wednesday at 1225.